Hi everyone, Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com coming at you with 21-22 tops. UEFA Champions League, Merlin Chrome Soccer or Merlin Chrome Soccer UEFA Champions League. Either way, a nice product here. All 12 boxes, pick your team number 13. All card ship, full hobby case. A lot of nice stuff. These are the list of teams in the break. And then there was a one spot featuring 17 teams. There was a 17 team combo right here. Very big thanks to this group for making it happen on a Monday. Appreciate it. So there's Michael with the 17 team combo. Features a bunch of teams here. It's pretty nice. Thanks to the people who bought their spots straight up. I know it took a minute or two to fill this, but I appreciate everyone's patience on it. It was marinating for a little bit. Got little rooftops next to your name. That means you won those teams in that filler we did uh, not too long ago. So thanks, everybody. No matter how you got into it, I appreciate it. All right, there's the case right there. And good luck, everybody. Now, Jack, Jack B in the chat was uh, vacationing in the uh, in Spain and Portugal. What do they call that, Jack? The Iberian Peninsula, I believe. Is the Dodgers on are broke now? What? Is Todd Bowlby broke? No. Oh, well, yeah, maybe after spending all that money on Chelsea. He can't afford Trey Turner. Can't afford Trey Turner. No, I don't. I, I, Chelsea over Dodgers. I don't think. I don't think they were ever in on Trey Turner. He wanted to go back to the East Coast. So you don't think they gave him an offer? I mean, I, they probably said, "Hey, how about three years, fifty million dollars a year?" And he was like, "Eh, <laughs> I'll take thirty-seven years and eleven years at thirty-seven million dollars a year, guaranteed, no trade clause." Yeah, but the Iberian Peninsula. Jack was there and then visited Camp Nou, where Barcelona plays. Pretty impressive facility, he was saying. Got a little tour, but only limited to certain parts of the facility. Oh, but you had to pass on the tour because your wife impatiently wanted to see La Sagrada Familia. Is that still under construction? Hasn't, hasn't that been under construction for 100 years? I went... To Barcelona, uh, not long with that. Nick Jaspi's older brother, actually. Him and I went to Barcelona many years ago. Ran with the Bulls in Pamplona, a little bit, a couple hours away from Barcelona, but spent a couple days in Barca. Went to that that big uh, that marketplace. That was pretty awesome. But missed out on the Camp Nou. It just didn't really. We didn't get around to it. I don't know. I don't know why. There's, there's plenty of, of, uh, you know, there's plenty of uh, what's call it? Public transportation that gets all the way out there. That public transport in Barca was amazing. There's Weston McKinney, and there's Alexander Isaac, to two seventy five. And ooh, what a nice autograph. Hyun Min Sun, in his Tottenham gear, knocked out of the World Cup, unfortunately, by Brazil. But I don't, I don't think a lot of, a lot of people expected uh, the Korean team to end up as far as they did, getting out of the group. Chris, Chris Lombardo with Tottenham. Nice one. And it, it, the Sagrada Familia will be still under construction for the next hundred years? Do they let people inside? I feel like when I went, they had suspended tours inside. There's Leroy Sané to 150. There you go, Chris, congrats. This is for Bayern Munich, EA with Bayern Munich. Marco Verratti, Refractor.
Thomas Muller, Thomas Muller. I think these uh, I think these are a little more common than I think, but it's still Kylian Mbappe, who uh, has a good chance at winning the Golden Boot in this year's World Cup. There's Suso to 225. There's Lionel Messi. And so you were, you were, yes on the inside tours. Okay, did you do the inside tour? I want to do the inside. I have, to, I have to go back. I think this is also a little more, not, not short printed, but it's Cristiano Ronaldo. Getting a little, getting a little uh, feisty, Cristiano Ronaldo. Not getting along with, with management at Manchester United. Not getting along with management on the national team. But uh, yeah, so maybe 150 years because the workers taking smoke breaks every 15 minutes. All right, next box. And I'll do a I'll do an autograph recap at the end of this break as well. Barcelona, definitely, definitely a place I would I would go back to. What's the? Did you do? Uh, I'm trying to think what it's called. Oh yeah. Uh, Park Guell, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It has an umlaut over the U. I don't know how that's pronounced. But Park Guell, maybe? I went there. That was pretty awesome, too. It's kind of a nice little park perched upon a hill, so you can kind of see down into the city a little bit and all the way to the Mediterranean. Also, I remember from going out there, um, I really liked, uh, I think on the beach, yeah, even, uh, yeah, even, even for me, I remember that. I remember being being like, I thought the metro stop would pretty, pretty much put us right there, and then we're like, oh, we'll walk, and then oh, it's like an uphill climb, up a steep street, and then you're climbing other things as well, climbing stairs. But totally worth it. I thought it was great. Here's a Zidane Iqbal rookie silver. Here's another rookie, right here to 275. If you're if you've got like a bit of an eagle eye and you're wondering, Am I, doesn't doesn't the numbering look a little different? All these cards are printed in Italy. This is for AC Milan. That's for Michael P in that combo spot. Here comes the autograph, and it's Kenneth Taylor for IX. That's also for the combo spot for Michael P. Another thing I liked in Barcelona that I don't think they would ever have here in the United States because we are uh, we are a very litigious society and I don't even know if they have these in Barcelona anymore but big like rope pyramids and they're big pyramids and they're all ropes and you can climb up them it's like a kind of like cargo netting but with like thick bungee rope type material and you can just climb up and down those things it's a lot of fun there's a Frederick uh, Chiesa for Juve to 99. It's also for the combo spot. But those th those things are those things are pretty fun to climb. 
Jacques Felish. And there's Jeremy Doku to 199 for Stadia Rene. That's for Anthony. I feel like if they put those in like beaches in the United States, some kid's gonna fall off the top, break their arm. They'll sue and those will get torn out. Oh, maybe they don't have those. How was the uh, how was the flight there and back? Was that all right? I feel like there I feel like there have been some some uh, international flight horror stories that happen sometimes, like especially just especially coming out of the pandemic. A lot of people want to fly again, but not all airlines are fully are you know are at full employment capacity and so sometimes issues with service or missing bags stuff like that right, and that reminds me I, I gotta get I gotta renew my passport Maybe put a maybe put a Jaspi's branch in Barcelona. I'll have to brush up on my Espanol. I might have to learn uh, Catalan or Basque, whatever the language is. The Catalan's the region, Basque is the language. Maybe set up in uh, Ibiza instead. Going there was okay. Connecting flight from New York back to San Diego was terrible. Oh, it's a shame. Sadio Mane, 105 out of 150. Still Liverpool edition here. Daniel with that one. And we've got Crepin Diata for Monaco. A light touch on the with the pen there. That's going to go to Monaco, probably is a combo team, right? Did we sell it out right? Oh, no, we did sell it out right. Evan with Monaco. There you go, on the board with an auto. Oof, no leg room. Yeah, that's it's been an uh, it's been an issue. Seats are getting uh seats are getting smaller. There's Pedri, eighty one out of one ninety nine. And yeah, unless you're willing to to pay for you know, that gets expensive on a on a long flight, right? Paying up for like first class or or like in between first class and main cabin. There's Alessandro Zanoli for Napoli. That's part of the combo spot, Michael P. Kai Havertz refractor. And we got a Kyogo Furuhashi, 16 out of 50. For Celtic, that's part of the combo. There's a Hyunmin Sun Refractor. For Tottenham, saw his autograph earlier. All right, another box. 
Chris, Chris is saying, you want no leg room? Fly Spirit. Did that once. Never again. Friend has kneecaps on the seat in front of him. Yeah, I've never flown Spirit. I've heard enough horror stories where, where I will, you know, I'll eat the extra cost for a little extra comfort. I don't know how uh, how you bigger guys do it. I'm a small guy, and I feel like the seats are <laughs> the seats are kind of tight. might be better for the airline industry though. I think uh, Delta is finally going to figure it out with their uh, with their pilots and their flight teams. I think they're going to come to an agreement on their wage negotiations between the union and Delta and hopefully when that gets settled, I think that'll that'll set the tone for other airlines and then we'll have happier pilots. <laughs> I definitely want happier pilots. Well compensated happy pilots are good for the industry. You know, and then everything else will hopefully fall in line. Alright, there's De Brunia. Thought that uh, Giovanni Reno would be used more for the American side, but maybe next World Cup. There's Patsendaka to 150, Speckle for Leicester. And, ooh, nice. Ansu Fati. Gold parallel. Going to Barca. Alan Murdoch with Barcelona. Won an extra spot and then won Barcelona in the filler and gets the Ansu Fati one out of 50. Nice. Will we see him in action tomorrow? Maybe. I don't know what the schedule is tomorrow. Tomorrow's the 6th, right? Yeah, tomorrow. They're the early match. 7 a.m. L.A. 11 a.m. Or 10 a.m. East Coast. There's Alan. Congrats. That Spain team is pretty stacked. All right, a couple of rookie refractors here. There's Asher uh, Vrancek for Wolfsberg. That'll be for the 17 team combo. And there's Felix Afenagayan for Roma. That'll be for the 17 team combo. Michael P. We got Robert Lewandowski, 74 out of 75. And a Dane Scarlet for Tottenham. That'll be for Chris. How old is Robert Lewandowski? Was this is this his was this his last World Cup? Doesn't have any. Anyway, uh, that's that is a Bayern edition, by the way. That's going to go to EA. Does he have one more World Cup cycle in him? And we got an orange under twenty three stars Hannibal, twenty out of twenty five for Man United. It's going to go to Brian Croft, who won United in that filler. And there's a killing Mbappe. Nice. 98 out of 99. Nice one for PSG. Paris Saint-Germain. That'll be Matt Bristow. You know what? I, it's been a minute or two since I've done this break. I want to say the Renaissance, I don't think is one per case. I think it might be a little more short printed than that. I'm trying to think back. I, I want to say that not all cases have that Renaissance insert. 
I don't think we've seen one yet here. Yeah, that's true. Happy pilots are important, but where do you see them getting that money? More people on flights. Well, I don't know. We'll see. More people on flights, smaller cramped seats. Hopefully, better paid pilots mean more people wanting to become pilots. That means uh, more flights. Hopefully, the, the amount of flights won't be static. Hopefully, it'll increase the number of flights, which means maybe a little more space on, on airplanes. Yeah, I remember like pre-pandemic when I would like fly to Vegas, even in like even sort of a busy sort of night, I feel like there would still be regularly five or six seats, like just empty. Not anymore. Now, now, now people, now people, and then now sometimes flights are just straight up overbooked more often than not. Do pilot gets paid worse than teachers? I, yeah, unless you have like a decade plus of seniority. Yeah, I don't think, I don't think your, I don't think your uh, entry level pilots are making that much, and you're probably, you don't probably don't have the best routes. All right, next box. Yeah, Chris saying from not just flying. I know Delta's like this. The more you pay, the better the seat. Right, I agree. That's how most airlines should do it, but I think the the more budget airlines have have really changed, kind of changed it up. Like Southwest is kind of chaos, right? Where it's just like first come, first serve, and whatever seats available, you just plop in, and nothing's assigned. I can't do the nothing is assigned stuff. Twenty out of one hundred and fifty. Ivan Romero, it's like, hey, I'm, this is the seat I bought. Let me choose my seat. I'm an aisle seat guy. Let me choose my seat. And that's where I'm going to sit. Tried to upgrade to first class. Too late. Full. Yeah, those, those get full pretty fast. There's Coca, 213 out of 250. Atomic for Atletico Madrid. That'll be for Daniel Smith. And Nuno Mendes for PSG. It's for Matt. Picked up PSG straight up. I know it took a little bit of time to fill, but we eventually got it. Got an autograph out of 99. Thanks for your patience, everyone, in this break. There's an Aster Vrancek, 23 out of 99 for Wolfsberg. That's going to go to the 17 team combo. Michael P. Won that in the filler. All right, sixth the box. That's right, Chris. Yeah, I don't know how, how people fly on budget airlines. I mean, if you have the means to, especially if you can afford it. If you can't afford it, what are you going to do? You know, that, I'm glad those budget airlines exist. But if you can afford it, I mean, I don't know why people try to try to save the extra, like, 100 bucks or whatever, and then be like, fly with a budget airline. Then they're surprised that they have bad, bad service or a bad experience. And it's like, well... I don't think I mind a budget airline if it's like an hour flight. If you're going to LA to San Francisco, LA to Vegas or something like that. It's just an hour. I'll grind it out, you know.
Who does that? Who does everyone have for the matches tomorrow? Morocco, Spain is the early game, and Portugal, Switzerland is the late game. The winners of those two matches will face each other in the quarters. I guess if you're going chalk, there's Raheem Sterling to 275. I mean, Spain, Portugal is the easy answer. But who's ripe for the who's ripe for an upset? Barca autograph, Alejandro Bald. Balde? Bald? Alejandro. For Barca. That's gonna be for Allen. Rookie autograph. Rookie refractor. Kamaldin. Sulemana. For Stadia Rene. And there's Myron uh, Badu for Monaco and Elliot Matazo for Monaco as well, both going to Evan. Chris is skipping ahead to, we'll get to that game in a second, but Morocco, Spain, Portugal, Switzerland. What do we think there? I don't know. Is, is Cristiano Ronaldo not happy on that Portugal team? I feel like... I feel like Spain's going to take care of business against Morocco. But I think Portugal could be ripe for an upset. And there's uh, Dusan Vlahovic to 250. Sort of a long shot for Golden Boot, and I put a little, sprinkled a little bit on him. Mm, Grizzlebees Jack saying, hey, don't count out Morocco. Is Spain ripe for the upset? Cristiano Ronaldo being more of a distraction for that team. And I want to say I feel like Portugal didn't have the did not have the most impressive group stage. No, maybe they did. They just they did score some goals. But I guess that loss to Korea was a little uh, was a little surprising. All right, next box. Well, I don't know if that's been confirmed. I mean, the offer is out there, Gilo, that Cristiano Ronaldo has offered like some ridiculous amount of money to play in the Saudi League. He's a free agent right now, Cristiano Ronaldo. But, um, but yeah, who are the Saudis going after next? They got golf, trying to get some soccer. Yeah, maybe they'll, they'll go after LeBron. Yeah, Mark saying, yeah, watch him come out, CR7 come out and score two. He's definitely capable of that. I'm sure Cristiano Ronaldo is doing the math. <laughs> you know, he's like, if I do this, but I run the risk of losing sponsors, how much money do I, will I really lose, and will that be offset? Sergio Ramos to 50. 
There he is right there. Sergio Ramos going to PSG. 38 out of 50. Steven Gerrard, one of my favorite players. There's Felix in Mecha, 46 out of 75 for Wolfsburg. And there's Pedri for Barcelona. There you go, Alan. <laughs> yeah, the Riyadh, are they going to buy Major League Baseball, Mike? Ninety-five out of ninety-nine. There you go, Alan. Paul Pogba. 11 out of 150, Manchester United, Brian. And there's Isaac Lehaji for Lille. It's going to go to Nicholas. All right, next box. I guess we can, uh, so I guess look out for the upset. Morocco, Switzerland, I feel like could pull off some upsets. Uh, three of the four quarterfinal matches are set. The first quarterfinal match is going to be Netherlands, Argentina. How do we feel about Netherlands, Argentina? I'm not sure what kind of team Argentina is. Opened the World Cup with a clunker, but then did well in the other games. Netherlands do have the exciting Gakpo. That'd be good for the hobby if Netherlands kept advancing. Chris was saying, and Chris wants to see Brazil France final. Yeah, so Jack's saying one thing I can't stand with Portugal is that young kid, Jao Felix. Oh, yeah. Come on, young guys. You don't need to do that. He's far, he's far too talented for stuff like that. Argentina should should go through. But the Orange are a pretty feisty team. That's going to be a good match. I think all of these are going to be a good match. Croatia, Brazil. You know, everyone thought Croatia, you know, too many players on the wrong side of 30. Nice. There's Giago Jota, 114 out of uh, 199. For Liverpool, another Portuguese player here. There's Matthias Tell for Stadia Rene. That's for Anthony. And we got a rookie orange, Antonio Blanco. 25 out of 25, nice. Real Madrid, that's for Brian Croft. Yeah, Netherlands, Argentina, Croatia, Brazil, England, France. I mean, those are some 
Those are some great matchups there. And those are bona fide those are bona fide teams right there. Will there be a Cinderella story? I guess Morocco, Switzerland could could challenge for the Cinderella story of the World Cup. But a lot of big clubs. There's uh, Josip Sanesic, Bayern Munich, 146 out of 225. That's for EA. Rookie Silver for Man United, Anthony Alanga. That'll be for Bryant. And there's your autograph. There's, it's Diata again with that light touch on the auto. Monaco, Evan. All right, another box. Netherlands has, has the players to win the whole thing. Yeah, Memphis Depay, underrated player. Got a good defense, too. Center back Virgil van Dijk was on Liverpool. Is a, uh, is a big presence. I think in 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 a in a pool that I'm in, I've got a I've got England Argentina with England to win. As long as Harry Maguire's on England, you don't trust the team. Yeah, that, that's England's consistently a, quite a frustrating team because a lot of great individual talent. Maybe not Harry Maguire. I don't. Th I don't think club or country. They're big fans, but. But they got a great team on paper. Sometimes they they can sort of frustratingly play a little too a little too conservative at times when they've got the the ability and the power to attack. There's Jules Kunde for Sevilla to 99. It's part of the combo spot. Michael P. Here's a rookie refractor for Monaco. Vanderson for Evan. There's Harry Kane, yeah, guys like him can, can bang the goals in. There's Liam Delap to 250 for, uh, for Man City. And there he is again, Refractor. So two different ones there for Mark, Mark L and Manchester City. There's Mikel, or Michael, Oria Zabal, 89 out of 150 for Real Sociedad. It's part of the 17 team combo, Michael P. And Jamie Vardy, Leicester City autograph. 
Nice, Daniel Smith. Sixty-one out of ninety-nine. Won a title with Leicester City. Bangs in a bunch of goals. Could be playing for England, but I think he kind of gave up on international duty a little while ago just to keep his body fresh for club. There's a good chance Argentina and Brazil. There's some marquee matchups here. Good chance that Argentina and Brazil meet each other in the semifinals. Which would be pretty awesome. And there's a chance on the other side of the bracket, there's a chance it'll be either England or France versus Spain or Portugal. Also a marquee semifinal match, but both, both those matches are going to get some great ratings. I mean, that would be pretty amazing. Yeah, if Messi, if it's Argentina and Brazil meeting each other, and if Messi scores a goal against Brazil and leads Argentina to a win, yeah, that would be pretty impressive. I mean, he already has an excellent resume, but there's Cristiano Ronaldo to 150. And there's the Renaissance card, Jude Bellingham. Speaking of England. make his way to the Premier League in the summer transfer window. Maybe to Liverpool? I'd love to see him on Liverpool. Real, Really great player. Keep an eye on him in that England-France match. Uh, this is um, Dortmund edition. Borussia Dortmund. That's for Daniel Smith. There you go, Daniel. Nice Jude Bellingham. Cristiano Ronaldo goes to Brian and Man United. Rookie Silver, there's Luca Romero, Lazio, part of the combo. There's Coque, Atletico Madrid to 199, that'll be for Daniel. You've heard links between Jude and Real Madrid. I'm sure a lot of people are after his, his signature. Although, if Liverpool, if they do not I've been having a weird season. If they don't make, if they don't get a Champions League spot, that that's going to seriously endanger their chances to get to get Jude Bellingham. There's Nico Gonzalez, 35 out of 50, and there's Leicester City boss Brendan Rodgers. Not the Rockies prospect, but the coach, Leicester City, Daniel Smith, with that. Bayern Munich, Stanisic, Rookie Refractor. Two boxes to go. I think so, too. I think they, re they really should have focused on kind of improving the midfield in the summer transfer window. Darwin Nunez has been great, but they should have looked at a little more shoring up that midfield a little bit more as well. I think that, that cluster cluster injuries, they had a big cluster of injuries 
to the midfield and to their attack, and that didn't really help at all. I know all teams deal with injuries, but that's just, that's just part of it. They'll have to figure it out. They'll have to adjust. Right, and the World Cup being smack in the middle of most domestic seasons, that's going to be interesting to see how players recover coming back. Couple teams up for sale, ladies and gentlemen. All right, see you, Michael. How's it going, man? Um, I think uh, the Glazers are exploring options to uh, sell the team. I think they have they have some bank or whatever. Start looking at options of of uh, maybe selling the team. I think their tenure with running the team. I don't think their fans have really liked it. Uh, Liverpool as well, my club, owned by uh, FSG, are also exploring a sale option. I, I don't know if they're going to sell it entirely. They might if they get the right offer, I think. But I think they're looking to maybe sell part of the team, if not all, and give up the controlling interest in it. So we'll see what happens. See you, Jonah. All right, there's Liam Delap, 14 out of 99. And we got Benoit Badiashil, Monaco. That's going to be for Evan. Delap will go to Man City. That'll be for Mark. But uh, football clubs aren't cheap, though. Only so many people in the world who can afford... Afford those teams. Look at the price that. Uh, well, speaking of Chelsea, look at the price that Chelsea went for. Timo Werner, blue parallel, little color match, 66 out of 75 for Michael P. and Chelsea. So that's going to pretty, put a pretty big price tag on teams like Manchester United. Ooh, wow. Ageless Alchemy autograph Lionel Messi. Paris Saint-Germain. Wow. Ooh, that's a great time to get this. Matt Bristow with PSG. Took a minute or two to fill this break. Three out of 25. Took a minute to fill this break, but we got it done. Nice one. Great case. There's uh, Jan Pacheco for Real Sociedad, 76 out of 199. Last box. Well worth the wait, I think, this case. Pretty amazing. Just marinating. Those hits were just marinating. They're waiting. Waiting to be pulled by us for you. Thanks, everyone, for getting in. I think when we started this break, we only had one team left. Now it's sold out. Nice. So we're going to take a quick little break after this box. Refuel a little bit. When we come back, it's looking like that Prism World Cup will be the very next break. I don't think I see anything else sold out.
All right, final box coming up. Thanks, everybody. Good luck. We got Jonathan David for Lille. That's a nice rookie card right there. That's um, the Canadian star. In his club gear, Nicholas with Jonathan David. There's Romelu Lukaku for Chelsea to 275. That'll be for Michael. We got a Marco de Grasa for Juve. Rookie Refractor. Juventus is part of the combo. Ivan Romero, Rookie Green, 95 out of 99. And the last autograph, Nico Gonzalez for Barcelona. And that is for Alan Murdoch. Got randomized Barca, had a pretty nice break. Got Harvey Barnes, 216 out of 275. And Sadio Mane for Liverpool at the end. What a break, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do a little quick little recap here. Got Brendan Rodgers, Jamie Vardy. We got the Mbappe Green. We got the Gold Ansu Fati. We have the Hyunmin Son, the Lionel Messi, the Jude Bellingham case hit, the Renaissance insert. Really nice case. Thanks for getting into it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com, and I'll see you next time for the next footy break. Bye-bye.